the pickup artist actually taught me to never use the word date. They say, you want to hang out sometime? Because that word date is so scary to people. So all of a sudden means very, being very... It's a great alternative. What's that? It's a great alternative. Yeah, let's go hang out. I, have I, some? I feel like people just should say what they want to do instead of even saying hang out. They say, oh, let's do this if they find something in common. That's good too. Let's go have some coffee. Because mm -hmm. let's go have a date. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you have to wear a dress. I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so again, speed dating, I always thought it was a great way to practice this. Me sitting and being present, me sitting and enjoying this person and not having to decide if I'm ever going to be with them again. So again, if you go to speed dating and you have the conventional mindset, it's going to be like, why do I have to waste five minutes with this guy? I've already decided I don't like him. How can you have fun when you do that? So you're making it then a decision-free zone? You're making it just a meeting decision-free? What I'm saying is, what I discovered is if I come into my body and this present moment is perfect and this person sitting with me is actually where love is possible in this moment. Mm -hmm. love or, or dating is always love is available in the future sometime. I'm going to meet my lover in the future sometime. So in this moment, this is who it's possible for me to love. Can I love this person in this moment? Because if I can't, how am I, going to uh, how am I going to love my lover when they show up? Conventional dating, we're practicing being unloving. <gasps> we're trying to find love by being unloving. It's like reverse psychology, right? It's, it's all backwards. If I go out and practice, if I go out and be practice being more loving, I'm going to attract love. But if I keep turning myself, you know, I found that the longer I online dated, I became more and more critical and picky and, you know, and it was like, wow, this doesn't work. So what I say is nothing's wrong with you or any of the people. Something's wrong with the way we're going about it. We're being unloving, trying to find love. So They're being trained to be unloving, just like we all have been. Mm. We're being trained to be unloving to the opposite sex. Mm. If you come back, we have other um, exercises that we do. That's why people come back, so we do different exercises each time. We have some exercises where we go into, what are my fears about the opposite sex, the same sex? What have I been taught? You know, I had to really change because I had been taught that men just want one thing. You know what? I have never met a man who just wants one thing. And I hung out with pickup artists. And they are looking for love just like everyone else. But we've been sold this bill of goods about what women are like and what men are like. That one thing is a stereotype. I, I have never met a man. There may be one. I haven't met all men, but every man I've met and may go out and try to get laid tonight. Women may go out and try to get laid tonight, but is that what's underneath it? No. And what was really important to me in my own personal journey studying this was that it's something we can do. We can turn ourselves more into lovers and then we can attract someone who's equally loving instead of these sort of half-loving people. I realized about halfway through that intensive dating process that the reason I wasn't attracting really loving men it's because I wasn't a really loving person. I thought I was. I had friends and cat, a cat, and you know, I'm just like <laughs> a regular loving person. But I realized I had work to do because I had a lot of prejudices, not against people's skin color or people's uh, religion or anything like this, but I had prejudices against people for the way they looked or their age or their financial status or whatever things we don't really talk about in the dating world. A lot of us were super unprejudiced in our lives. We, most people today, at least in this conscious community, we pride ourselves on the variety of friends we have, right? I'm cool, I have gay friends, black friends, all kinds of ethnic friends, and this and that, but I wouldn't date them. So a good example of this is a um, student of mine who just recently we were going through this idea and she said oh I have an example of that she said on the online dating you check these boxes for one of one of them for me was I would never um, date a smoker that was a hundred percent no 
So when I met Greg, he's since quit, but guess what? He smoked a little bit. So I would have never even met him. He smoked occasionally. I wouldn't have even met him if I had been in my prejudices. And um, my, the story I was going to tell my student is that she had checked the box, no Muslims. She, I said, would you have had Muslim friends? She goes, oh, yes, but I didn't think I would want to date a Muslim man. Guess who she's married to? <laughs> Happily married to. Okay, but uh, it's a lot of us have these prejudices to uh, encounter.